Sophia, I just wondered what cinematic potential you immediately saw in Nancy Jo Sale's Vanity Fair article, and to what extent you might have immediately seen a story that had sort of a universal kind of quality to it um, in encapsulating today's youth. Yeah, when I read the article, I just thought it had so many great elements for a movie that I would want to see that it has, you know, it has a fun popcorn aspect, but then it also is disturbing and it's saying so much, you know, about contemporary culture and and how it's affecting young people. So I thought there were a lot of elements that um, I, you know, I was fascinated with and, and thought it could be a movie. And kind of wanting to be seen in the right place, wearing the right clothes with the right people isn't really a new thing, but I just wondered how far you think that has been um, made more sort of potent for young people by reality TV and the internet. Yeah, it seems a lot, um, there's, I mean, there's always that kind of peer pressure growing up and it seems mm. so much more complicated with, um, uh, you know, all the information and, and also, you know, celebrating all these brands and things. And when I was a kid, you know, nobody had a designer bag in school or even knew about that. And so it just seems um, way more complicated now. And, um, and just that side of our kind of people branding themselves and self-promotion and, and how that must be affecting you know, younger people. Because you do use um, scr screenshots of Facebook and there's a lot of uploading of photos, isn't there, when people are out and getting their drinks and, and yeah. shot as well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's how they got arrested because they, they were posting pictures on Facebook of them with their stuff and, you know, they're young, so they're not really, th you know, they're just kind of showing off their stuff and not, not thinking. And, um, you know, that's how the police tied it all together. But, um, yeah, it just seems like so part of um, that culture that kind of always being aware of your audience and documenting everything. And Leslie Mann's character, Laurie, has really taken the law of attraction and the secret to heart, hasn't she? It's almost like a religion, I think. But yeah. she, she's brilliant in the film. I believe you got your actors to create sort of vision boards in character, did you? How helpful was that? They did. The, yeah. we, we, we try to do rehearsals that are, are get them in character and do things that the characters would do. So the family, she taught, the mother in real life was homeschooling them and doing vision boards. So we had the, them really do that and get into it. It's just all all things that the characters might really do. And having met Emma Watson quite a few times over the years to interview her, her, her about her movies, she seems very different to her character, Nikki. Why, why were you sure yeah. that she was the right choice for the film and how impressed were you with what she did with, the, with Nikki? Yeah, when I met her, I just thought, you know, that she was smart and had a great approach to her, the character, but then she did an audition for me and and because she's so different, obviously, than this kind of LA party girl and I was really impressed with, um, you know, how she could transform and I thought she just did such a great job with the accent and, and also making the character feel real even though she's you know it's kind of absurd saying absurd things but she found it some way to ground it in some kind of reality and I, I love the, the the dialogue in the film how did you make it so authentic really what, what did you use for your research for when you were writing the dialogue oh thanks I, um, I mean I took a lot of quotes from the real kids from the article which um, were poignant to me and um, and then also I just I mean, when I was writing it, I, I had a friend's um, teenage daughter be a consultant with the slang. She checked it to make sure the slang was okay. <laughs> and Paris Hilton makes a cameo in the film, and I believe she actually opened up her home. Is that one of the more exotic locations that you've um, shot in over the years? Yeah. Yes, definitely. It was um, when we first got to see Paris Hilton's real house, it was um, like nothing I've ever seen before. And I'd heard that she had a nightclub room, but then to really see it and and just all her pictures and the pillows with the, her pictures and stuff. It was very um, exotic and she was, I really appreciate how she led us into her, you know, real private world. Um, I love the look of the film as well. I believe it's the first time that you've used digital. Mm -hmm. Why was that particularly right for the bling ring? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I, um, oh, we talked to Harris Vies, our cinematographer, and he thought we should shoot on digital just because there's more support and we have to you know get with the modern times but it, it felt like the right um way to shoot this film because it's so much about instant information and and also incorporating computer screens and and um and all the other video elements that it, it and the surveillance it all, it all it all it helped it all work together i think and can you tell us something about your music choices of the film quite sexually charged a lot of the lyrics but like most pop music is mm -hmm. today really yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I wanted the music to have the energy of these kids and how they were living and partying and, and, and felt like music they could really be listening to, but just had that, that energy of the thrill ride that they were on. Sophia Poplar, mm -hmm. thanks very much. Congratulations mm -hmm. on the Blame Ring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.